I began to pray and seek God about what he wanted me to teach this morning. He took me to a teaching that is a little different style than I usually teach. Uh, and, and I said, God, are you sure that's what you want me to do? And this week has confirmed what God wants to speak in this house today. So I believe that I have a word from God that will minister life to you. It exposes me. It exposes all of us. But I believe it will set you free this morning. How many of you know we're living in some tough times right now? As we look around right now, I've never seen a time when I've seen more people hurt. I've seen more people wounded. I've seen more people stressed. I've seen more people that have committed suicide and thought about suicide. It's just one of those times that we live in. And the church is under attack like I've never seen it be under attack. But in the midst of that, God loves us so much that the outcome of this is going to be in the face of the enemy. And he is going to lose and we are going to win. The church is going to grow. It's going to be more powerful. More people are going to come to know Jesus. More people's lives are going to be changed. Because the truth is, we've just been wounded. We haven't been conquered. There was a time in my life when I lost everything. I had absolutely nothing left. I had absolutely nothing left. I didn't like God. I didn't like church. I didn't like anything associated with it. I had pastored a very large church and now it was gone now. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. I was hurt. People tried to convince me it's going to be all right. I didn't believe it was going to be all right. And I ended up in a little town out west and, and a man came to me and, and he tapped me on the shoulder. As a matter of fact, he grabbed my coat. He pulled me right up to him and he pointed his finger in my face and he said this to me. He said, young man, and I was young at one time. Some of you getting there with me. Don't be looking at me that way. Just wait. He said, young man, you're not conquered. You're just wounded. And he said, young man, wounds heal. And God is not through with you yet. And because he loves you so much, you will do it again. I went to the book of Romans and I hesitated whether to read this much or not. But it's so powerful. The Passion Bible says this. So incredible. God said we are more than conquerors because he loves us so much. And I want you to know this morning that the love of God is like the father that stands by the road and he looks for his son to come home who has lived in a foreign land. He's wasted all of his inheritance. He has nothing left except himself stinking from the pigs. And yet his father stands by the road and says, come home, son. I want to put my arms around you and I want to love you just like you are. You see, if God loved me so much before I came to know him and before I gave my heart to him, what makes you think that I can do anything now to stop him from loving me as I am? See, that's for somebody in this room. That's for somebody watching us on their, their phone or their computer or on television. Listen, God loves you so much, he cares for you. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 35, it starts out and it says this in the, in the Passion Bible. It says, so what does all this mean? If God has determined to stand with us, tell me, who then can stand against us? If God loves us so much to stand with us, who can stand against us? God proved his love because he gave his only treasure. And I'm going to paraphrase some of this. He gave his only son. And since God gave his all freely, he certainly will not withhold anything else he has to give to you now. 
And as we look around and we see failure everywhere, we see destruction, we see hurt, we see racism, we see all of those things now. I want you to know that there's a God that loves us so much and he loves Connection Church and he loves you so much that he will give you anything he has because that's who our God is. So powerful. Who then is left to condemn us? As a matter of fact, it says, who then would dare accuse those whom God has chosen in love to be his? God, I love this, God is the judge. And he has rendered his verdict. And his verdict for you this morning in this room and on this set is not guilty. You are free. Because he loves you that much. You may have been wounded. You may have had a knife stuck in you. You may have had your right hand cut off. And it seems like the church reaches out. And immediately that hand gets cut off. But I want you to know this morning that you're just wounded. You're not conquered. And you will be more than a conqueror when this thing is finished. I, 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 I didn't get this said in the first service. I want to make sure I get it said in this service. Listen. People say to you, well, your faith didn't get you out of this. Your faith that you believe is so strong didn't get you out. My response is, my faith may not have gotten me out of it, but my faith is getting me through it. Oh, that's a word, church. My faith may not get me out of every situation, but I'm telling you the faith that I have in His Word and in the power of His Word is going to get me through Kovics, it's going to get me through riots. It's going to get me through all of this mess. And in the end, I will come out victorious. I may have been wounded, but I'm not conquered. Hallelujah. Who could separate us from the endless love of God's anointed one? Absolutely no one. For nothing in this universe has power to diminish his love toward us. Troubles, pressures, problems, all of those things come, deprivations, persecutions, dangers, and even death threats. But they're all powerless. They're all powerless when compared to His unlimited love. All day long we face threats for your sakes. Yes, we're considered nothing more than sheep being led around. But I'm telling you, even in the midst of this thing, we will triumph over them for God has made us to be more than conquerors and His demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything this morning. Please get a hold of this. So I live with confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I'm convinced that you and I will triumph over everything because of his love. There is nothing present. There is nothing in the future. There's no circumstances. There's nothing that can separate me from the wonderful love that has been lavished on us this morning in his presence. I began to think about this and I began to say, God, what do you want me to tell people? And he said, tell people that you're wounded and let them put their hands in your wounds. Let them look around the church and see other people that are wounded and understand that somebody's wounds in this place, somebody's hurts in this place will absolutely set somebody else free. And while I'm thinking about it, don't, don't you dare look at my scars and think they're wounds. Don't you look at my scars and think they're wounds. You see, my wounds still hurt. But my scars just means I've been through something and I'm now healed up from it. I had surgery on my hand a few weeks ago and, and uh, man, it's still tender. It's still a wound down inside. My other hand, I ripped the top a bit several years ago. There's just a scar there now. It doesn't bother me anymore. And before long, this wound will become a scar because this thing will be healed up. And I'll be set free from it. More than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. It's easy to say that when things are going good. Easy to say I'm more than a conqueror when, as pastor says, you got a little jingle in your pocket. Easy to say that when your kids are in church with you. Easy to say that when, 
when uh, you got a little extra money to pay the electric and a little extra of this and, and man, the wife loves you and your kids are just happy and all of that. But I'll tell you what, you let some woman come to you, Miss Shopper, and she wants you to go shopping and you don't have one penny. Oh, me, you're not so much of a conqueror now. Well, honey, I'm sick. I just can't go out. I'm sick. My granddaughter used to say all the time she hated school, didn't want to go to school. She'd get up in the morning and she'd say, Mommy, I can't see. Open your eyes, Jordan. <laughs> Mama, my legs just ache. They just ache. I'm just sick. Not much of a conqueror right now because things aren't going the way they should. But the Word says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. You see, the world is not looking for somebody. And I know this is real teachy this morning. And this is, this is straight from the Word. The world is not looking for somebody that says, I'm more than a conqueror when things are going good. The world is looking for somebody that says, I'm more than a conqueror when all hell has broken loose. And church, we are that people. This is that people. Place. And this is the time that we stand up and say, I may have been wounded, but I'm not conquered. And I am more than a conqueror. And my faith will take me through this. I will come out the other side of this in victory. Well, Brother Bill, what if a second wave comes? What if a third wave comes? I'm still more than a conqueror. And I may be wounded in one. I may be wounded in another. But I'm coming out the other side of it victorious because the word promises me that I'm going to come out the other side of it. You see, it all comes back to prayer. It all comes back to believing. It all comes back for standing for something. I was a, a, a high school graduate, just graduated, got in my car and went to Clyde, Ohio, lived with farm workers there uh, and, and uh, slept in their camps. I slept with my back against the wall in the corners because I didn't want to get stabbed at night. Wasn't much I didn't do. And my mom and daddy was home, little Baptist, little Baptist preacher and his wife, and, and they were so Baptist it was way over their head. I mean, they were Baptist. And if you weren't Baptist, you were just going that other road. And Praise God. But I'll tell you one thing. They knew how to pray. They knew how to believe. And they were wounded, but they wouldn't be conquered. And one day, the 1st of August, I found myself going back down 75 to a Christian college to get a Christian education because I had somebody that was wounded, but they wouldn't be conquered. My sister came into my Bible study one night, wounded, hurt, beat up, abused, all kinds of things. And before that night was over, her heart was back with God. And I had the honor of baptizing every one of her children because somebody believed that she could still be set free and she could be a conqueror instead of just being a wounded soul. I found out something, church. You take an animal that's wounded and you back it in a corner, you better get ready because you're going to have a fight on your hands, and that animal is going to come out of there victorious. The church has been wounded, but I'm telling you, it's backed in a corner, and it's not conquered, and it's going to come out victorious, and this church is going to come out the same way. I read, I read in Matthew, it says, The kingdom of God is subject to violence, and the violent take it by force. Most people think that means, well, let's just get our AK-47s and go out and just shoot them all and take care of it. And I've thought that at times. I know none of you have, but I've kind of had that tendency at times. That's not what it's talking about. Let me tell you what it's talking about. It's talking about that young lady that's walking in the abortion clinic to have her baby aborted. And instead of standing there with a sign saying, you are a murderer. You're going to hell. Everything in your life is wrong. You ought to be able to go up to her, put your arms around her and say, Honey, if you will keep that baby, you can go to my house. I will pay your medical bills. I will feed you. I will take care of you. And I'll help you raise that child. And if you don't want it, we'll find a good adoptive home for it so that child can live and grow up knowing Jesus. That's what taking it by force is all about, church. You see, God loves all these weird people. You know, all those tattoos. 
I walked in this church, I saw beards and tattoos. <laughs> and this morning I got to see a guy get up and, 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 you know, lead us into the offering and help us. And he had on pink and baby blue and white polka dot socks and his pants rolled up so you could see them. See, that's freedom, church. I thought, these people are weird. But I realized something. God has made them more than conquerors. He wanted to trade socks. Well, I made it. I wanted to trade socks with him in there. We thought about just doing one and one. You see, when I moved to Knoxville, Tennessee, I had the honor of being blessed with a wonderful house there. And we moved in this old farmhouse and started fixing it up and realized I went outside one morning. Well, I didn't even go outside. I was standing in my kitchen one morning and somebody was knocking at the door. It's early in the morning. I thought, who's knocking on my door? Nobody knows me here. So I went to the front door and there was two goats standing on my front porch knocking on my my door. You see, my neighbors were Muslims. They had goats. They had more goats. Then they had some goats. Then they had chickens. Then they raised meat rabbits. And I thought, man. The Lord spoke. He said, they will know more about Jesus by what you show them in victory than they'll ever know with you putting a sign up. Christmas came around. My wife is one of those women that loves the house decorated. Husbands, if you've got one of those, God have mercy on your soul. But I wanted to please her, so I went out and I bought laser lights, those that that have, uh, you know, angels and snowflakes and that big fat red guy and, and all of those things, and it shine on your house. I didn't buy one and I didn't buy two. I, wanted to buy, I bought three. I wanted to make sure everything was covered. So I had them out, and man, she was so happy, and the house was lit up like Christmas. I mean, lights everywhere, and I'm so proud. I've made her happy, everything. When Mama's happy, everybody's Everything was good, and I went out to my driveway and walked all the way out to the road and stood and looked at my lights and realized all of my Christmas lights were shining on my neighbor's Muslim house. And I mean, folks... It wasn't just a little reflection. I lit that place up like a Christmas tree. So so I went over. I said, I am so sorry. I didn't have any idea that my Christmas lights were shining. My Christmas, Christmas lights were shining on your house. She kind of leaned over and she said, shh, don't tell anybody. Leave them alone. We like them. You know why? Because when her chickens were in my front yard, I didn't have fried chicken for dinner out of her chickens. I didn't kill them. I just loved them as neighbors, and they were the best neighbors you've ever met. As a matter of fact, they went over to Palestine. They went over on the Israeli side and brought us a gift back that represented Jesus. You know why? Because we have become more than conquerors and we might have been wounded with things and we might have had thoughts of wounds but I'm telling you we were conquerors I love this when I started studying and and looked in the word when Jesus was standing there ready to be crucified he was standing there waiting for the soldiers they came and here stands Peter and he jerks his sword out must not have been a very good swordsman because all he could do was cut off an ear And he took his sword and he sliced the ear off of a soldier. Jesus turned to him and he said, put your sword up. And he reached down and he got that ear, blood running everywhere, and he stuck it back on the soldier. The blood was gone. You see, Peter took the sword. Oh, church, we're so guilty. Peter took the word and he cut off the hearing of the enemy. And then he wondered why the enemy didn't like Jesus. Wow. 
Don't you know every morning when that, that soldier went in his bathroom and stood there and looked at his ear, he just kind of pulled on it a little bit and went, wow, man, this, uh, his life was changed. His life was changed because somebody was more than a conqueror. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And, and you know, Ryan talked about lying earlier. I thought, God, this is not true. I see Christians hurt all the time. I see them dis, just destroyed. And, and I read this and studied it, and it doesn't say hurt you. It says nothing that you face in this world will have an eternal, lasting effect over you. Everything you face is temporary, but you are eternal. Isn't that powerful? Anybody been hurt since you've been saved? Yeah, me too. Anybody been wounded since you started coming to church here? Anybody ever say anything that just ripped your guts out since you got saved? Listen, right now the church is being wounded and hurt, but I'm telling you, Chronicles says this, if my people who are called by my name will pray, humble themselves, and seek my face, then I will heal their land. There's a time for the church, and I believe it's now. And I know I'm a little radical at times, but there's a time for the church to stand up and say, enough. This is enough. Because when you do that, pray, humble yourself, and seek God, He will send a deliverer. I see the nation of Israel. They were, they were totally in captivity. The Moabs had a king. His name was Eglon. Eglon was a vicious king. And the word says, I, I'm, I'm not writing this, the word says he was so fat he couldn't even walk. And this king was vicious and is so symbolic of what I see today and it ripped my heart out when I saw it the entire nation of Israel was made to bow down to and get on their knee before this king and he demanded their taxes he took their money he took everything but the people began to cry to God and say it is enough and God said I will send you a deliverer and he sent them a man named Ehud Ehud was the son of a Benjamite. A Benjamite was a tribe in Israel that were known as the most fierce, fighting, unbelievably powerful tribe in that entire nation. And Ehud only had a left hand. He didn't have a right hand. When Benjamin was born... His mother was in such pain and such sorrow that, it, that she literally died after he was born. But before he was, before, after the birth and before she died, she looked at this baby and she said, I will name you Benoni, which means son of sorrow. You have brought me such sorrow. And his dad stepped in and he said, he will not be called son of sorrow. He will be called Benjamin, which means son of my right hand. And God raised this man up to deliver an entire nation of people from an ungodly tyrant king that was bent on destroying that entire nation. And God said, I want you to go to the people and tell them, give me all your tax money, and, and I want you to take that to Eglon and tell him you have a gift for him. Ehud said, okay, so he strapped on his right side with no right hand. And he had no right hand because somewhere in battle, he had had his right hand cut off. He was wounded, but he wasn't conquered. He strapped a sword on his right side. And he went into the king after getting through security and getting through all the mess. And they said, why do you want to talk to the king? He said, oh, I've got, I've got a gift for him. I have all of this money I want to give to the king. So when the servant told the king, Eglon said, well, okay, I'll talk to him. Who is he? He said, he is Ehu. He is a Benjamite. 
And the king said, oh, those right-handed people. And then finally he said, okay, I'll talk to him. He said, send him in. They said, where do you want me to send him? He said, well, just send him to my chamber. Anybody know what a chamber is? He said, I'm going to the toilet. Just send him in and I'll talk to him there. Just insult God's man every way you can. So when he took him in, he finally went in, and here sits the king, and, and, and O. Ehu came in, and he said, uh, I, I've got a gift for you. And he said, what's that? He said, well, I don't want anybody to know. So the king sent everybody out, and finally it's just Ehu and Eglon in the chamber. And he said, well, tell me why you're here, right-handed man. By the way, where's your right hand? You said, well, I've been a little wounded, but I'm not conquered. And he said, well, what do you want to say to me? He said, well, it's a secret. I've got to get close to you so I can tell you. And he leaned over, reached in, grabbed that sword. And the word says he stuck it so deep in the king that even the handle went inside of him. And the word says dirt came out. I'll leave that to your imagination. And Ehu ran, locked the door, went out the window and went to God's people and said, the king is dead, we now have victory and God's people took back their land because somebody was wounded. He lost his right hand, but he was not conquered. And I began to study this and I began to see this. Many today, many, 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 many people today look at a left-handed man that's lost his right hand and say, you're conquered, and they don't realize he's just wounded. He's just wounded. So I begin to see this and begin to study this and begin to understand what it is. I begin to realize that the church is finally standing up and saying, you may have wounded me, but I'm not conquered. People come to this place all the time. They come in wheelchairs. They come with walkers. They come with skin. They come with all kinds of things. And you look at them and say, oh, it's so sad. You're conquered. You're destroyed. But they look back and say, no, I'm just wounded. I'm not conquered. Sometimes you need to speak out of your woundedness. I began to read about Jesus and he came back after he was crucified and they put the thorns and and beat him and all of those things. And and when Jesus came back, I thought, okay, here he comes. He's going to come and he's going to be perfect. That's my vision of heaven. You know, my body's going to be perfect. I'm not going to ache anymore. I'm not going to be old anymore. I'm just, everything is going to be absolutely wonderful. And every facet of my being is going to be perfect. And Jesus is standing there coming through a wall to his disciples and he stands there wounded. And Thomas wasn't there. Jesus said, okay, I'll come back. So the second time he came back, he looked at Thomas and he said, Thomas, see, I thought he'd have a glorified body. I thought there wouldn't be anything wrong with him. I thought he would be perfect in every way. But Jesus came back and he said, I've been wounded, but I'm not conquered. Thomas Put your hand in the wounds and be healed. Isaiah 53, 5 says, By his transgressions and, and we are forgiven. And with his wounds we are healed. And church, I stand before you this morning coming from a past where I lost everything, where everything was gone, and I was wounded and destroyed, but I refused to be conquered. And I stand before you this morning saying, you can be victorious. You've just been wounded. You haven't been conquered. And wounds will heal up, and you'll just have scars. And somebody's going to be able to touch your scars and be set free because you've been willing to show your hurts. I'll never forget this. Remember I told you about that man that ministered to me? See, he was a pastor of a church in Nebraska. Big church. Wonderful church. 
I was there, worked with him. It's a great place. This man had a beautiful wife who was his praise and worship leader. She got cancer, breast cancer. Began to eat on her and eat on her and eat on her. And he began to declare the word. He preached on healing. He did a series on healing. He declared, my wife will be healed and delivered. And she got worse and worse. In the meantime, his father and mother are in, in a foreign land on the mission field. And his dad dies on the mission field. And he looks at his wife, who's now very sick, and he says, what do I do? She said, go to your dad and maybe you can raise him up. So he jumped on an airplane, went to the foreign land, and buried his father and brought his mother back home with him. Three months later, they're in church in music practice. On a Thursday night, they're having music practice, and she made her way to every music practice. And that night, she came in barely able to get to the stage, but she stood there. And in the middle of music practice, his wife got sick. And she sat down on the steps and he went over and sat down beside of her on the steps and she leaned over on him and he held her in his arms as she died, passed away on the stage. Talk about wounded. The people started saying, thought God was going to heal. Thought God was going to deliver. If this is your faith, I'm leaving. Even some of his leadership left. Even people that he loved. Now his dad's dead. His mother is a mess. His wife has just died. And he sits here tormented, wounded. And he went home to his secret place, which was his bathroom. And he said he was sitting there just weeping and weeping and weeping. And and he said in the midst of the weeping, he kept being drawn to the the little garbage can that sat there beside of the toilet. And and he he said, "Why why is this happening? And he looked down and there was a National Geographic laying inside of that. And he said, "What is okay, what is this all about? And he reached down and jerked the magazine up. And across the front of it was an old tattered banner. And it said, Wounded but not conquered. And he opened it up and he read the story of how Stalin came in to defeat the czars. He couldn't do that by himself. And he got the Cossacks, who were vicious Benjamite fighters, to fight for him. And they defeated the czars. And after they defeated all of his enemies, he realized how powerful those people were. And he said, listen, I better kill them or they will destroy me. The Cossacks were like the Israelis. They were in tribes. So he's, oh, listen to this. This is a word for you. He separated the tribes into one little tribe here and one little tribe there. He pulled them away from church. He pulled them away from God's people. He pulled them away from everybody. And he began to destroy tribe after tribe after tribe. They just murdered them and buried them in mass graves. And there was one little tribe that he couldn't find. When the battle was completely over and everything had settled down and Stalin was now himself being attacked again, coming out of the mountains, the dark, cold, unbelievable mountains, was a little tribe of people, a little tribe of soldiers. And as they came out of the mountains to declare who they were, Their banner was an old tattered banner, and that banner was on the front of National Geographic, and it said, we may have been wounded, but we were not conquered. I'm telling you today, you may have been wounded, but you will not be conquered. Jesus had his hands out. He said, put your hands in my wounds. And Thomas said, my Lord, and my God. You see, church, I want you to know today that that same Jesus is holding out his hands to you. He's saying, I know you've been wounded in all this. I know you're afraid. I don't know whether you, you don't know whether to stay home or not stay home. 
You don't know whether to come to church or stay. You don't know what to do. Life is a mess right now. But just put your hands in the wounds. And I'll heal you and your land. God spoke this in my heart. I wanted to teach something else. But He spoke this in my heart. And He said there's going to be people watching on their computers. There's going to be people sitting on their beds with their phone watching this. There's going to be people in that room today that have all kinds of testimonies that would blow your doors off. And He said, I want them to know today they may have been in prison just wounded they may have been unfaithful to their wife just wounded their kids are a mess just wounded they may have murdered somebody just wounded I want to heal you so you won't be conquered would you let Jesus would you stand with me please would you let Jesus just come in and minister to you today Would you just say to him today, Jesus, I am so distraught. I am destroyed. Would you heal me today? Would you just set me free today? He's still standing here. Just bow your heads for one second. If that's you today and you say, I don't know about this Jesus thing. I didn't know this. I've been so hurt and so wounded. I want to be free right now. I want Jesus in my heart today. I want to be able to walk out of here a conqueror and in victory. Would you just slip your hand up? Anybody over this room? One? Anybody else? Two? Anybody else? All right, put your hands down. Now, if you're that person that has a testimony where you've been hurt and abused and beat up and you didn't think you could get past your past and you've been so wounded and you don't know what to do. Jesus is here today to heal your wounds. Just put your hand up and say, Jesus, heal my wounds right now. I'm so broken. I'm so hurt. I don't know what. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know what to do. I just want to be free. Thank you so much. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you that Jesus is now in my heart. I receive him as my Lord. I receive him as my Savior. And I'm so thankful, Jesus, that you healed my broken heart and you made me new today. I receive you and I thank you for the honor of serving you for the rest of my life. And God, over these people that raised their hands, that's been hurt. Jesus, you said in Luke 4, 18, I am the healer of the broken heart. I pray over these people right now that you will heal their heart and you will deliver them and you will set them free today. In Jesus' name, amen. Could we give God just a big praise offering?